Motion sensors are pretty awesome ways to automate stuff like opening and closing up shades based on the temperature or turning light on and off depending on how bright the room is. They can even alert you to when there is motion while you are away. So I'm going to test out 9 different sensors to find out which one is the best. First up is the Eve motion sensor. This $50 sensor works on a 2 AAA battery so you can pretty much use it anywhere. It has an IPX3 rating so it's good for indoor or outdoor use, even in the shower. It's got a light sensor for measuring locks, which is great for light based automation. It uses thread over matter and works with major apps like HomePod Mini, Google Home and even the Echo speakers without needing an extra app. It doesn't rely on the cloud so your data stays safe and the device keeps working even if EVE goes bust. It's got a 120 degree detection range and can sense motion up to 30 feet away. The only downside is the price but I'd love to see a cheaper version or additional sensors like humidity and temperature. Next we've got the Acara P1 which costs about $24 and runs on a CR2540 battery that should last up to 5 years. It has got a light sensor like the EVE, but you can only use it for automations within the Okara app. And it needs a Zigbee up like the Okara G3, Okara M1, or the AOTEX Samsung SmartThings up. It's got a wider detection range than the EVE at 150 degrees, but a shorter detection distance of 23 feet. There was lots of false positives within the Okara app making it unreliable for automations. However, I discovered that it was much better with updates outside of the app, especially within the Apple HomeKit app. The third reality motion sensor is a new one I found. It is a small $20 Zigbee motion sensor that runs on two AAA batteries and should last up to two years. You'll need a Zigbee up, but third reality does have one that supports matter. It's got 30 feet detection distance, but it didn't quite reach 30 feet during my testing. In fact, it was less than 23 feet. The U-Motion sensor is the second most expensive at $43. It also uses Zigbee, but if you get the Philips Hue bridge, it can connect to Google, Amazon, and HomeKit via Mata. It's got a light sensor and a temperature sensor, but the temperature sensor isn't very accurate, so I wouldn't use it for anything critical. It is really reliable, just like the EVE sensor, and perfect for someone within the Hue ecosystem. The SwitchBot is a $24 motion sensor that runs on two AAA batteries and should last up to three years. It also has a light sensor, but it doesn't measure actual locks values like the others, which can make your automation a bit tricky. It uses Bluetooth and has some serious detection ranges, but I gotta say this sensor isn't great. It's really unreliable and inconsistent. Amazon even labels it as a frequently returned item. The third reality net light sensor is another variation of motion sensor. It either uses a USB port or under a 20 volt plug-in. It also doubles as a night light that can be integrated into automations in a variety of ways. It uses Wi-Fi over matter which means it works directly with any app without needing any extra app. It can be useful for automations such as reminders to take out your trash on your scheduled pickup day or weather alerts for snow or rain using the color change in night light. It also has a light sensor which can be used for light automations to turn main lights on during the daytime when brightness is below a certain lux value and to switch to night light at night time when it's bedtime. One of the biggest challenges with PIL sensor is detection when still. They can only have two states, true or false. If you're not moving when it checks, it switches to false and turns off the light even if you're still there. The FP2 comes in to address this problem by using a millimeter wave sensor. It's quite similar to adaptive cruise control in cars. It's constantly taking readings and comparing them to its default state. So it can track up to 5 people and their exact location within that space. It's quite power hungry so it needs constant power. It's also new and quite expensive at $82. 
and it's a bit unreliable right now. Configuration and setup is complicated, frustrating and unreliable, especially while using the Okara app. Although it has a light sensor and works natively with Apple HomeKit, you can also link it up to Amazon and Google Home through the Okara cloud, but you're going to lose a lot of the functionality. Most of the functionality of this sensor is within the Okara app, creating an over-reliance on the Okara app. The Okara app in itself is completely unreliable and I personally don't like the app itself. But I think it will get better with time and competition. The TP-Link Smart Switch with motion sensor is a slightly different approach. It is a $20 Wi-Fi Smart Switch with a motion sensor. It requires a complicated install process than the others. However, it bundles a Smart Switch, a light sensor, and a motion sensor in one. The TP-Link doesn't work with Apple HomeKit, however, it works with Google and Amazon. You can, however, integrate it into Apple HomeKit using Home Assistant HomeBridge. The Samsung SmartThings motion sensor, now called EOTech, is my longest serving motion sensor. I've used it for 4 years and I highly recommend it. It is great for places where I don't need light sensors like bathrooms, garages and pantries. It uses Zigbee so it needs a Zigbee app to function. It only works with SmartThings, Google and Amazon but no HomeKit support. It comes included with a temperature sensor which is fantastic for monitoring the temperature across my entire house. It also has a magnetic back so which means that I can stick it to any magnetic surface. In terms of ranking, I'll put EVE at number 1 because it supports the most platforms and it is the most independent and the light sensor works with almost all platforms. It's also accurate and consistently triggers but the price is a bummer. The EU has an edge over the EO tech if you're using Apple Home. But I like the temperature sensor inside of Samsung SmartThings. I'll pick the third reality Zigbee motion sensor over the P1 mostly because of the fact that the car motion sensors are extremely unreliable in reporting their usage in all of my apps. I had the same problem whether I was using the Okara app, the Apple Home app, the Google app, it was just the same thing. I really want to like this sensor but the unreliability just makes it unappealing. The TP Link is good for specific cases. If you have sports in your house that just needs basic on and off and light based automations, and this switch location is perfect, and you're not using Apple Home Kit, then it is a good one. I like the third reality night light motion sensor for places like my kids' bedroom and our toilet. I'm able to set up automations such that during the daytime the main lights come on, and at night time it uses the night light instead. Overall, I think all these motion sensors have their strength and their weaknesses and um, I think any of them would be a good option except for the SwitchBot. I'd say stay away from the SwitchBot motion sensor. Every other one, they are all pretty good in their own ways depending on your use cases. I wish I could find a sensor that incorporates all of this sensor into one. Do you have a favorite motion sensor that you use that is not on this list? Feel free to drop it down in the comment section, let me see if I can check it out. Or have you used any of these ones that have a completely different experience? I'd like to know down in the comment section. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Take it easy. Peace.